What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will and uh, you should know the scenery behind me at this point. I'm fishing bridge in Centerport uh, and right now the bluefish are in. Um, little snappers but fun stuff but there's a good amount of bunker here and uh, there's a cormorant out there fishing. Um, yeah, right now, let me show you, not get hit by a car here. I've already got two in the bag, so I'm allowed three, but here are there's my two. Um, I'm gonna keep fishing and show you guys a little bit, well, hopefully, show you guys catching one. So, we're fishing really, really light tackle little tiny silver spoon there's a lot of them there just a matter of getting them to bite so this spot is like clockwork I mean it's really uh, one hour after high tide the gates open up the tide starts coming out and all the bait fish gets pushed out and everything just goes crazy all right, let's see if we can get our last one here. There we go, there we go. <laughs> we got him. There we go. And that is our bluefish limit. Oop. All right, I'm gonna dispatch that guy and get these home and let's make something to eat. So something that I noticed over there, uh, there was about seven of us fishing. And I'll be honest with you, I was the only one catching. And it was like every other cast I was getting a little snapper on. Um, and what I noticed is we were all using similar stuff. I actually gave one guy my little uh, silver spoon that I was using. And the thing that I noticed was that everyone else had heavier pound line on. And I have four pound test on. Uh, and I, it happened the other day over here as well. Um, the lighter tackle. They really, I, I think it affects the fish can't see it, you know. Whatever it is, it worked, and I got my my three snapper to bring home and cook. So, I'm happy. All right, so I have here my little snappers. I'm gonna keep these guys whole, and I'm actually gonna grill them. Scissors might be too big, but we'll make this cut here on each of them. So gills and all, gills, guts, everything, rip those out, that's it, cleaned out, almost like cleaning a trout, so there we go, nice and clean, let me just clean this up and then we'll make our marinade. Alright, so before we put it in the marinade, now I'm not really worried about the scales on these guys, because I'm going to grill them whole and all those scales they're not really rough so they're gonna cook down you won't even realize they're there so I'm just gonna put a couple of slits in them to pick up our marinade all right into a plastic bag they go so I have one clove of garlic And we're gonna put a little bit of ginger. I'm not even gonna bother peeling that because again, it's gonna be in the marinade. You won't even notice it. And not too much ginger. It can actually overpower a dish 
pretty badly if you put too much in there so that's that's probably good all right so now a little bit of garlic salt doubling up on the garlic as always uh, some cracked black pepper some soy sauce let's do this the right way be here all day otherwise there we go and some pineapple juice now you could add a little bit of brown sugar to this and it would take on really like a teriyaki but I'm more into savory than I am sweet so I'm gonna leave just the sweetness from the pineapple juice now I'm gonna lay that down in the fridge and you know every couple of hours flip it over but I'm gonna let it sit for at least two to six hours I might even let it go overnight we'll see all right we got the barbecue going so one of the things that I want to put underneath the fish after we grill them is uh, some sauteed broccoli. Now whenever I'm sauteing vegetables like green beans or broccoli, what I like to do first is blanch them. So I prepped my broccoli, I got a pot of boiling water, and we're going to add salt. Now this is the main reason that... I like blanching the vegetables because you blanch them real quick. It turns them nice, bright green. You move them from the water into an ice bath and they just look absolutely beautiful. But also blanching them drives that salt into the vegetable and gives it seasoning. So then when you're sauteing it, the salt isn't just on top. And it really does turn it just a beautiful green. And if you put that in an ice bath, that green will hold. All right, let's check on our briquettes. They are looking good. Spread those out. So because of the sugar content of the pineapple juice, um, this really is going to have the chance to stick to our barbecue grate. So I want those coals to be low and I want to cook these really low and slow to avoid them sticking. I learned that lesson in Ireland. The mackerel, I had my grill way too hot and the skin just got obliterated. I really want to keep the skin on these. Okay, so I oiled down my grill really well. That's another mistake I made in uh, Ireland. I only oiled the fish and not the grill. So I have my grill. Nice and oiled. And I'm gonna put these on the outside. Cause like I said, I want them to cook slowly. They're also So while my fish are cooking over here, we're gonna saute our broccoli real quick. So I got my pan up to heat, just a little bit of olive oil. All right, throw on some garlic. And now that broccoli is par cooked from when we just blanched it. So it really doesn't need, it just needs a toss, a little bit of seasoning, and that's it. And I don't want mushy broccoli. I'm just finishing it to where, and I can feel it with the tongs. It still has some crunch to it. I turned off my heat. I'm just going to let that sit. 
move our garlic around a little bit so it doesn't completely burn. Whoa, beautiful. Now one thing I want to point out as well, because we blanched the broccoli and then threw it into the ice bath, look at that color. Nice, bright, bright green. And I do like my vegetables have a little bit of crunch to them. That is perfect. That's right in the middle. Not too soft, not too crunchy. Now, one of the things that I have here is just a lemon cut in half. We're gonna put that onto the grill. I have some cilantro and scallions. We'll just chop that up to add to the top. I don't know why, for me, chopping scallion is one of the most satisfying things. Put these onto the grill. All right, just gonna warm up our broccoli just a little bit. And then those little guys we can pull off. For right now, I'm gonna move them. I'm gonna move them all the way off to the side so that they don't overcook while our bigger guy cooks. I'm gonna pull two little guys off. They look so good. Last guy is ready to come off. We are cooked all the way through. Along with our lemon. Nice little char on that. And our charred scallion. Just a little bit of our cilantro and scallion. A little more. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Let me show you guys that. Let's dig in. Actually, I'm going to put a little more cilantro and scallion. Now, you could throw your marinade into the pan and uh, cook it up just a little bit to cook out any raw fish and then pour it over. But I want the broccoli and the fish to be separate. I want the broccoli to kind of be its own thing without being covered in the same sauce as the, uh, the fish because then everything is one note. A little bit of lemon. That ginger pops through. Mmm. And the garlic. The skin is cooked through, so it's not slimy or chewy. It's probably a little bit boring watching me fish that bridge time and time again and just coming up with bluefish snappers, but they're really sustainable and I mean this, two people could eat this easily if I caught a little bit bigger ones. I could have thrown the smaller ones back, but I just wanted my three and cook something. But it just shows you the versatility of fish in general. You could do the same fish you could cook a hundred different ways. It really is amazing how much you could do with fish. Um, all right, I'm gonna finish eating my lunch. If you like this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you at the next one.